So you want to get into motorcycling and learn to ride. And you're interested in a 600cc sports bike for your first bike, like the Honda CBR 600RR or the Yamaha R6. Now they're both awesome bikes, and if you've been riding for years, go and test ride each model and pick the one you like best. But if you are new to biking and you still need to learn to ride, you might want to watch the rest of this video. Hi, I'm Francois from AdventureBikeGroup.com. Now, when I was in school, there was nothing that I wanted more than a sports bike. I remember watching, looking through all the magazines back then. It was the uh, Kawasaki ZX9R that was my favorite. Um, and my father would never let me get a bike. So I had to wait till I left home. Now, when I started looking for bikes, my neighbor at the time bought himself an old XT500 and he convinced me to do the same. So I got into dual sport riding um, and we started touring bikes and I never looked back. So I never owned any sports bikes, but I've tested many over the years writing for magazines. Um, I remember my favorite was the BMW S1000RR when it just came out. Awesome bike. So I still love the bikes, but I, I, I've never owned one because I just like dual sports more. Now, in this video, I want to chat to the beginners out there about starting out on a 600cc sports bike and whether it's a good idea or not. If you want to learn more, I've written, I've written two posts, one on the Honda CBR600RR and another on the Yamaha R6. You can check uh, in the links in the description below to find out more. Now let's start out with the reasons not to start on a 600cc sports bike. Now if you've got your mind made up, still listen through, through it. It's always best to understand what you're getting yourself into. So the first thing is if you start to ride, you need to learn clutch control and balance of the bike. Now it's not difficult at all, but it can be intimidating depending on the bike you ride. Now a sports bike is made for the track got a high seat height to give you ground clearance when you lean over the turns and uh, it's the, the rake and trail the slope of the front fork is quite steep or very steep and that helps flick the bike from side to side and turn in quicker now and the, the handlebars are very narrow so this makes it quite uncomfortable when standing still and slowly turning like a crawling pace in a parking lot like when you're starting to learn your clutch control so it feels like the bike wants to tip over. A sport bike are generally quite light, but it's still close to 400 pounds. So if you lean too far over, you are going to drop the bike. That brings me to number two. It is almost inevitable that as a beginner rider, you're going to drop the bike at some point. Now on a sports bike, you've got all these fairings and uh, on the sides, plastics. And when you drop the bike, I've heard of people totaling the bike by just dropping it in a parking lot at crawling pace. And this happens very quickly. Uh, so it could be quite expensive to replace the plastics. Um, so starting out on a dual sport bike or a smaller light bike that you can keep upright is, is just uh, so much less of a, a hassle. And it will do much more for your confidence if you know you're not going to drop the bike or if you drop the bike, it's not going to cause major damage. Point three is the obvious one, the power. Now these bikes are super powerful. The R6 has 118 horsepower, but it delivers the power at 14,500 RPM. The red line is at 16,000. Now you'll never on a public road reach those uh, kinds of RPMs. You're going to land in jail or in a coffin, um, but below 7,000, the bikes are fairly mild. And you'll have watched YouTube videos where the the rider or the motor vlogger says, yeah, the bikes are very tame below seven or 8,000 RPM. It's easy to ride. It's almost boring. Now that might be true, but I can guarantee you at some stage, you are going to wonder what happens in the power band. Now, if you go up to 10 or 11,000 RPM, it starts to wake up. But I guarantee you, if you go look for the maximum power, you are going to hurt yourself. It's, uh, something goes wrong very quickly if you test the limits of the sport bike. Now I've also listened to a couple of YouTubers that on a, a 600cc, something like an R6, say uh, you can you cannot ride an R1, a 1000cc to the limit on the road, but you can on a 600. 
and they are just lying. You cannot ride a 600cc sports bike at the limit on the public road without getting into serious trouble or hurting yourself very badly. These bikes are made for the track and uh, it's just... I tested this once on the CBR 1000RR. I wanted to see where it goes in first gear or how fast will it go in first gear um, when you reach the red line. Now, I did this on the highway. I slowly increased the speed and I reached almost 100 miles per hour. I think it was 96 miles per hour and I wasn't even at the rev limiter. So you can see how fast you will be going if you try to test uh, the power on these bikes. Um, and it's 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 going to happen at some stage. I know I'm a safe rider. I don't like silly speeds. I love motorcycles, but I, I am scared of high speeds. And every single time I rode a superbike, I went above 200 kilometers per hour. You just want to see what it's like. On the BMW, I, I, when I found a, a stretch of open road, when I looked down, I was doing 230, and stuff happens quite quickly at that pace. And and I quickly slowed down because I was scared a, a deer or a rabbit would jump in front of me. Uh, so, so even if you have self-control, you are going to test your limits, and you don't want to be doing that if you're still learning to ride. Then number four is confidence. If you are continuously riding the bike in the lower RPMs, you've, you're only riding at quarter throttle because you, you don't want to be going too fast, you're not going to really gain the same confidence. If you start on a smaller bike like a 250 or even a 125, you are going to start out in the normal throttle range at normal speeds, and as you gain more confidence, you'll ride harder, and at some stage, you'll be riding the thing flat out, but you'll still be doing legal speeds. And I guarantee you, it's, it's more fun as well. I had the opportunity to test the CBR125R and the CBR1000RR Fireblade in the same week. And I'm not lying when I'm saying the little 125 was way more fun. Not because I was afraid of the Fireblade. It was an awesome bike. But on the small bike, I had to ride it in the red line. I had to give it everything to go up or through a mountain pass just to keep it in the power band. And you feel like a racer, but you're only doing 50 or 60 miles per hour. On the fire blade, on the other end, go first, second, third year, and then you're doing 100 miles per hour and you have to slow down. There's just no way to really ride it hard. So you never feel like a racer, but on the small bikes, you have to give it everything um, so it is more fun on a small bike. It's cheaper. It's, it's less expensive if something breaks down. And uh, a year later, you can sell it if it was a second-hand bike for the same price and get yourself that bigger bike. And you're going to be a better rider for it. And then finally, the, the super bike or the 600cc sports bike is going to be way more expensive to buy. It's about $11,000, $12,000. Even if you buy a second-hand one, a good second-hand uh, R6, you could pick up for five, 6000 on Craigslist. Um, but if you drop the bike, it could cost you almost the same to fix it properly. And your insurance might even cost more than a small 250 second-hand. So get yourself a small uh, bike, learn to ride on it, trade it up or sell it for the same price a year later, and then get yourself the bike that you really want. And then the last tip is learn on a dirt bike. If you, firstly, it's not on the public road. There's less chance of getting into an accident because of uh, traffic. Uh, the skills that you learn on a dirt bike will translate well to the road. Uh, it's on off-road. You have less traction. So you have to be more careful. And if something happens, it's going to be at lower speed. And you can get used to the low traction environment, uh, sliding the rear wheel, etc. And so when you get onto the road, you'll have much more confidence controlling the motorcycle. So that's my five reasons why you should not start on a 600cc sports bike. Please let me know if you disagree in the comments and go and check out my two posts on starting on a 600cc as a beginner bike. And in, if you like this, like the video and please consider subscribing to the channel for more on anything bike related. Cheers.